All right, you guys, welcome back to another video lesson from ICU Advantage. In this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion talking about our ICU drips and in particular our analgesics. If you remember though from last lesson, we did a really good breakdown on what analgesics are as well as covering that pain pathway that's really involved in our perception of pain. And so in this lesson, we're actually going to take a look at the specific medications that we use in drip form to provide analgesia for our patients. With this information in hand, you'll have a much better understanding of these different medications and what our doses are so that you can go out there and apply that to your practice. But before we begin here, if this is your first time here to our channel and watching one of our videos and you'd be interested in more critical care educational content such as this here, then make sure and subscribe to our channel below. Make sure though that you hit that bell icon and select the all notifications. That way you'll be notified as soon as our lessons become available and you won't miss out on one. I do want to thank our loyal subscribers who continue to come back and watch our videos and support our channel. Truly the subscriptions, the, the likes, all the comments that you guys leave, uh, they really go a long way to help support this channel. And for that, I want to thank you. All right, and my name is Eddie Watson and this is ICU Advantage. And if you haven't already, make sure and head on over to Facebook and Instagram and follow us over there. All right, so let's go ahead and get into our lesson here and talk about the medications that we use in drip form for analgesia for our patients. Now, again, we talked about a lot of these in the last lesson when we were talking about that pain pathway. Now, there already were a few medications that I talked about in the last lesson when we were talking about the pain pathway. But for this lesson, I'm only going to talk about a few of them because I just want to focus on the ones that you are going to encounter in a drip form when it comes to providing analgesia for your patients. And so when we look at these analgesics that we're going to have in a drip form, there's really two primary groups that we're going to focus on here. The first is a group that we call our opioids, and the other group for now we're just going to call other. Now within our grouping here of opioids, there's three different medications that we're going to talk about here. The first one is morphine. The next one is Dilaudid or hydromorphone. And the next one is fentanyl, or sometimes you'll hear it called sublimase. Now, the first thing to know, though, is when we talk about the opioids here, is that these medications are going to have an effect as a central nervous system depressant. And so what this means then is that these medications are going to have a depressant effect on the respiratory center within our brainstem and also depress the cough center in our medulla. Also, these medications can cause hypotension, and this is both going to be from peripheral vasodilation as well as a release of histamine. And in addition to this, we're also going to see that decrease or that reduction in our patient's gastric motility which especially when our patients are on these medications for a long period of time, that this is something we're going to have to pay extra special attention to to ensure that we're providing the proper bowel care that our patients need. And I know this isn't everybody's favorite part. I know we've all experienced those blowouts once we've finally gotten ahead of this, but it's really vital that we are staying on top of this with our patients. All right, so let's go ahead and start off talking about morphine. Uh, the first thing that I want to talk about with morphine is that it has an active metabolite that's going to accumulate in our patients with renal impairment. So definitely something that we need to be keeping an eye on in those patients. Now for morphine, this is a medication that we can give in a bolus form. And usually if we do, it's going to be in the dose of anywhere from typically 2 to 8 milligrams. And then when it comes to running this medication as a continuous infusion, our range is typically going to be 1 to 10 milligrams per hour. And here with this medication, we're going to have an almost immediate onset and a duration that lasts about two hours. All right, so let's move on and talk about hydromorphone or Dilaudid. And this one is going to be really good when our first-line treatments have failed or patients have that tolerance to pain medication. Now, in terms of a one-to-one -one comparison with morphine, hydromorphone is actually going to be a stronger medication. And you'll see this in our bolus and our typical IV infusion dose, where our bolus is typically going to be anywhere from 0.2 to 1 milligrams that we're giving them. And when running this as a continuous infusion, the dose that we're typically going to find is going to be from 0.2 to 3 milligrams per hour. Once again, this one has an almost immediate onset and a duration that lasts about two hours. And so now let's move on and talk about fentanyl or sublimase. 
And fentanyl is one of the most common analgesics that we're going to be giving. And part of the reason for this is it actually has less hypotensive effect than these other opioids. Now, fentanyl, when we're comparing it to hydromorphone and morphine, is actually much stronger of a medication than these other two. And so we'll see here with our bolus dose that we give that this is in the range usually of 25 to 100 micrograms compared to the milligrams that we're typically looking at with these other medications. Now our typical IV continuous infusion dose is going to be in the range of 25 up to 200 micrograms per hour. Once again, this one does have an onset that is pretty much immediate. But another advantage to, to using fentanyl, and part of why we see it so often in the ICU, is it has a duration of only 30 minutes to one hour. So it's shorter acting, and it has less hypotensive effect than these other opioids. So you can really kind of see why it's something that we tend to gravitate to pretty frequently in the ICU. So here you can see three different medications, uh, all within this opioid class, but very different potencies. And especially when we talk about fentanyl with some decreased effects and some shorter acting times, uh, we can see how these medications are quite different from one another. But once again, all of these medications are going to be working in the same part of the dorsal horn of the spinal cord like we talked about from the last lesson and are ultimately going to have their effect by either decreasing the amount of substance P that's being produced by our presynaptic first order neuron or by increasing the threshold in order to trigger the action potential and depolarize that second order neuron. Together, these two effects are going to ultimately work to increase our patient's pain threshold and require a higher amount of pain and stimulation in order for that to be passed on to our patient's brain. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about when we're talking about the opioids here is actually going to be our reversal medication. And our reversal for our opioids is going to be a medication called naloxone or more commonly referred to as Narcan. And Narcan is essentially a pure opioid antagonist. And so what this means is that it's going to be competing for those same receptor sites that our opioids are acting on, and it's going to displace the opioids from those receptors so that they can't have their effect. Now, typically, Narcan is something that we're usually giving in a bolus to quickly reverse a patient. And if we do that, the, the bolus dose is anywhere from 0.4 up to 2 milligrams. And usually in most cases when you're doing this, you want to actually be diluting this down with saline and giving it to them in small increments until you see the effect that you want. And let me tell you, there have definitely been times that I've seen this medication given very rapidly and a patient immediately wakes up from whatever was causing them to be completely out of it. And nine times out of 10, when they wake up, they're unhappy and wild. And so the last thing you want is someone to go from completely unresponsive to 100% awake, wild, and crazy. Now, the important thing to know with Narcan is that it only has a duration of about 30 to 45 minutes. In fact, after about 15 minutes, you're going to start to see your patient slowly going back into that same state that they were in before. And so because of this, this is often going to require you to give them dose after dose. And so sometimes in the case of either ingestion or patients who have just had a high amount of opioids, you might even consider running Narcan as a continuous infusion. If we do, our starting dose for this is going to be 0.4 milligrams per hour. And from there, you're going to titrate it either to your patient's respiratory rate or to their level of consciousness. And so Narcan's a very important medication for you guys to know. It is something that you guys are probably going to give on many different occasions. And in fact, I can tell you a lot of ER nurses who have crazy wild slash horror stories of giving this medication to patients who roll into the ED. But again, within the ICU, this is not going to be something that's going to be all that uncommon necessarily. All right, so now moving on over into our other category, there's only one medication that I want to talk about real quickly here, and that is our medication that we call ketamine. Now, I did talk about ketamine in one of our previous lessons where we were talking about IV sedation. And if you haven't watched that, I'm going to link to that up above as well as down in the, the video notes. 
But if you remember from the first lesson in analgesics, ketamine is actually what we refer to as an NMDA competitive antagonist. And so going back to thinking about that pain pathway, we have those receptors, the NMDA and the AMPA receptors, on that second-order neuron that we find in that dorsal horn of the spinal cord. And again, these receptors are also going to be working to raise the threshold of depolarization for that second-order neuron. And so once again, if we raise that threshold, it's going to take more pain, more stimulation in order for our patient to have that perception of pain. Now, ketamine we can give in a bolus form, and our dose for this is usually going to be from 0.1 to 1 milligram per kilogram. And we certainly can use ketamine in a continuous infusion, but an important distinction here is we're not typically going to be using ketamine as a continuous infusion for pain relief. In fact, ketamine really works best when we're combining it with a low-dose opioid. And so when we are giving it in a continuous IV form, our dose is going to be anywhere from usually 8 to 25 milligrams per hour. And ketamine has an onset of about 1 to 2 minutes. But another really good thing about ketamine is the duration is only 5 to 10 minutes. And once again, we, we did talk about this in the lesson on sedation. But when using ketamine, these patients are at risk for disorientation and hallucinations. So definitely something to be aware of when using this medication. All right, so that covers the, the different medications that you're typically going to find in a continuous IV form in the ICU when we're talking about working to control our patient's pain. And so with all that said, I do want to thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, I really hope that you found this lesson useful. If you did, go down below. Make sure you hit that like button uh, as well as subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Feel free to leave us a comment. Tell us what you thought of this video. As well as if you guys have any questions, you're more than welcome to leave them down there and I try my best to answer every question. Again, if you haven't already, make sure and head on over to Facebook and Instagram and give us a like and a follow over there at ICU Advantage. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.